With the 40th anniversary of the Mount St. Helens eruption coming up on Monday, we are remembering those who lost their lives that day. He was a man who was on Mount St. Helens to warn the rest of us, a man who understood just how dangerous that mountain was. King 5's Glenn Farley talks to two people who knew him very well, and one used to work here at King 5. The pictures can only suggest the power of that eruption captured on a clear, sunny Sunday morning of May 18th, 1980. The top 1,400 feet of the mountain blown off. That explosion prompting perhaps the most famous last words said in the Pacific Northwest. Vancouver, Vancouver, this is it. This is the man who said those words, trying to provide the warning to the rest of us 40 years ago. David Johnston, scientist. David and I were standing on a mountain ridge doing an interview, and David said, we're essentially sitting next to a keg of dynamite. He said, the fuse is lit, but we don't know how long that fuse is. Jeff Renner retired four years ago as King 5's meteorologist, but in 1980, he was the station's science reporter, reporting live from St. Helens, even from the inside of a camper. It's because the weather here is so very stormy. Located in what would become known as the blast zone on the north side of Mount St. Helens. He had met Johnston two years earlier. If we were to stand here when that went off, we would surely die. Well, he was right. Well, obviously, we didn't know ultimately what would happen. We knew it was a very hazardous place. In fact, we had a station at Spirit Lake that had to be serviced every five days, and we knew that was too dangerous. Steve Malone is now a professor emeritus at the University of Washington. At one point, Johnston was his student. This is a, a gravity meter. This is Malone 40 years ago, his hair darker. He's a seismologist studying earthquakes. Johnston specialized in volcanoes. Earthquakes are precursors to eruptions, and the two remain connected during the emergency. For months, thousands of small quakes had shaken the ground under Mount St. Helens, indicating molten rock was on the move. There's all these earthquakes going on. As the ground trembled, as the north side of the mountain bulged out, as property owners hung out at roadblocks, allowed to check on their cabins and homes just a day before the eruption, what nobody knew was the trigger point, and everybody was tired of waiting. Renner, photographer Mark Anderson, and engineer Mike Carter came home on Thursday for good reason. It was Carter's wedding anniversary. Had you stayed, what would have happened? I wouldn't be talking to you today. We were camped, I believe the name of the uh, small ridge or knob as it were, was Spud Mountain. And it was directly within the blast zone to the north of the volcano. Uh, we first started out camping in a camper uh, trailer, and uh, then we moved into a tent so that we could get even closer. On Friday, Malone flew over a camper where David Johnston was staying to monitor the mountain for signs of trouble. I was installing two stations on May 16th, one at Elk Rock to the west, and another one at a site called SOS, just near Timberline. And flying in the helicopter across there, I could look over and see the camper that was up on Coldwater Ridge. There may also be some changes in the roadblocks in this area, at least if local merchants have their say. Another trip for cabin owners was planned for Sunday morning. Renner says had the eruption come an hour later, instead of 57 dead, it could have been hundreds. The eruption began at 8.32 in the morning. Did you think of David that morning? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very early on when I heard how big it was, that was one of the, the first thoughts, not knowing. And then probably late in the morning when the word was coming in that the devastation area was huge, uh, it started to sink in. David Johnston was literally uh, blasted off the mountain ridge that he was on, and his body was never found. Renner and the King team flew back to their old camping site to find this Datsun B-210, the driver still at the wheel. And I asked our helicopter pilot, Bob Wright, to set us down. I just needed for a sense of closure to see what had happened to this person. And all I'll say is that if you had experienced the heat of that blast, it was not a pleasant sight, but it firmly implanted in my mind to this day uh, how close I came, how close Mark came, how close Mike Carter came. 
uh, and the fact that we didn't uh, told me that I had to make good advantage, I had to take good advantage of the time that was given to me. Because that was, I view that as a gift. Not everybody got that that day. You could feel the palpable despondency, the, the, the sadness, the we weren't able to do what we hoped we could do by anticipating hours or a day ahead, something big. Johnson was heard over the radio that Sunday morning alerting his colleagues in the final seconds of his life. Vancouver, Vancouver, this is it. Mount St. Helens is still considered the second most dangerous volcano in the United States. And over there is an observatory named for David Johnston. At Mount St. Helens, Glenn Farley, King 5 News.